By watching or listening to this show, you are acknowledging that you are of legal age to purchase and consume cannabis in your region. This production is for adults only. Have you seen the slash? Made by users for users. Engineered for flavor. One of the coolest features around. A built-in loading tool. Learn more at www.stonesmiths.ca. What's happening? We'll tell you right now on This Week in Cannabis News. Uh, my good friend David Wiley is back as we can once again see each other. Uh, listen, I, I lost every day last week to technology, <laughs> but Monday came, I woke up, and things are better. So it always, even at your darkest, it can be seem like it'll never get there. That's really, well, like I was ready to throw my computer out last week. So I'm glad <laughs> that is over. We can see each other. How are things, my friend, in uh, what is, I would normally say sunny Okanagan, but now I'm thinking of saying snowy Okanagan. Winter time is always snowy Okanagan. It feels so gray out here. You get caught in a valley and basically all the clouds kind of, you know, they, they, they come in, they sit down and they stay. But yeah, good to see you again, my friend. Yes, it is indeed uh, good to, uh, you know, just every once in a while get a lesson in humility when it comes to technology. <laughs> and I certainly uh, got that last week. But listen, uh, in, in all seriousness, uh, my situation pales in comparison to what has happened with, um, you know, 200 people at Aurora, you know, this is a situation we have unfortunately talked about with a number of cannabis companies, David, but layoffs, particularly, uh, you know, when you're talking about layoffs at this time of the year are awful. Seems like Christmas time, uh, you know, this is when they make announcements year end and whatnot. And yeah, here we are, another situation uh, where the hits just keep on coming for Aurora. Uh, they recently laid off 200 people, this time at their flagship Aurora Sky facility in Edmonton. And capacity there is going to be cut by uh, actually to 25%. Um, so big changes there. And meanwhile, this has been a rough year. They've indefinitely paused operations at their Medicine Hat operation. Uh, Earnings-wise, Aurora took a $3.3 billion hit. Uh, that was their losses in their 2020 fiscal year, and that includes $1.86 billion in its latest quarter. So, um, you know, Aurora CEO Miguel Martin, he spoke with CBC, and he says that uh, most cannabis companies at the beginning had uh, rationally exuberant expectations, and he's telling CBC that basically you have to separate what people thought the business was going to be with what it really is. Um, and says you know, the buzzword I feel in cannabis over the last year. He says the companies are going to have to get through a right sizing. God, I hate that term so much. Oh. Um, basically, he says that no one should look at the overall economics right now of the cannabis business and think that it's not healthy or think that there's not great opportunities for companies that are being run well to be successful. I mean, Martin putting this into context too, has had about three months in the CEO position after taking over from um, the interim CEO, uh, Michael Singer in September. So yeah, he's new to this position and, you know, but we're hearing that just the same old messages. Oh, that you're right. That right sizing term. That's the term I got when, when Bell Media uh, made their cutbacks. And, you know, even though our station was a moneymaker, we still had to lose a job and right sizing. It's just just calling it the whole bunch of layoffs. And, um, I, okay, you know, obviously, that, I, I think that's the, the obvious thing right now is that you have to, you know, you have to ignore the, the projections. But these are real people that had mortgages and families and a Christmas planned and all of that stuff. And because people had too big of pie in the sky ideas, this is happening. So I, I, I honestly, honestly hope at the very least lessons are learned out of this moving forward with projections and projects going forward, because 
This is happening all too often. You know, this is what kills me is that CEOs have been calling this a supply and demand imbalance because LPs were overbuilding in the beginning. And that just always strikes me as disingenuous. The fact is there are all kinds of people out there that are buying and using cannabis. And if you're selling a good quality product, people will buy your product. It's when you're putting in 1 million square foot facilities and you're growing basically, you know, stuff that should be sold as uh, $60 ounces that people aren't going to buy into that. And we've seen a lot of that in those companies that are producing great quality products just can't keep up with the market demand. Yeah, it, it, it's it's not a... Uh... One brush paints the whole industry. Uh, you, you can't paint the whole industry with one brush because uh, there are companies that are proving uh, that it is working. And it, it's all about, uh, you know, how you go about it. If you went too big, too fast, you're paying for it now. If you went nice, slow and, growth, you're you're succeeding right now. And let, let's not forget that there's still, what, 45% of Canadians who are purchasing from their guy down the street so you can't tell me that there's not an untapped market out there that is just crying for good quality, affordable cannabis. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. We talked in that story about a facility uh, in, in Edmonton. It's uh, out by the airport in Edmonton. And there's another facility in that area, in the Leduc area, that is also in the news and, and for not good reasons at all. And it involves a six-time Stanley Cup champion, you know, one of the greatest leaders in all of sports, an Edmonton legend from St. Albert, where I'm from, Mark Messier. This is a, this is starting, is this, and, and, and this is not pretty. Some of the things that are being said are not pretty in this lawsuit that Mark Messier has launched. Now, let's, let's call this that classic line, it's a cautionary tale. And, you know, once upon a time, people thought that cannabis was a safe bet and now we're all looking back at that prediction and we're either laughing or we're crying or in Mark Messier's case, uh, we're suing. And, you know, the former captain of the Edmonton Oilers is suing Ed Morose. He's the CEO of Edmonton-based Destiny Bioscience. Messier says he lost more than $500,000 uh, in his investment in this company. And court documents filed in November in New York uh, state are showing that this lawsuit claims that Moreau's broke a personal a personal guarantee, if you could believe this, a personal guarantee that promised that Messier wouldn't lose money. Uh, I'd love a personal guarantee that I wouldn't lose money on any investment, and we can see how that worked out. So the documents were first obtained by TSN's Rick Westhead, uh, and basically there was an agreement that was signed in May 2019 and a year later, this company was in receivership, more than $42 million in secured debt, according to these court documents. So Messier, who uh, you might also remember played for the New York Rangers, is alleging that Destiny used his name and his reputation as what he calls as one of the most famous celebrities in New York to raise money. Uh, and then everything went downhill from there. Of course, none of these allegations uh, in the civil claim have been tested or proven in court. This is just uh, what's going to appear uh, in front of a judge at some point in time to try and figure out what's true, what's not, and uh, whether there's money owed. And I, I tell you, this, um, you know, this company, Destiny Bioscience, they had big, big plans. You know, I had uh, Taylor Inglis, their vice president, on this show. He's a former Grey Cup champion for the Edmonton Eskimos, so I you know that connection. Uh, uh, some of the other uh, people that, that were involved in the uh, in the company, and Don Metz, a local uh, media legend here in Edmonton. So when I went to visit this place, I was so impressed and blown away with what they had. They had all kinds of living soil and worm cast and, and different kinds of, uh, you know, growing situations, and then they were going to look into a whole lot. Of, like, like I jokingly told them they led the league in, in PhDs and doctors because they had so many on the staff. It was, it was really, really impressive. So I don't know the whole story of why it didn't go right. I know that they had big plans and, and, and it, it seemed very legitimate about what they were trying to do. Now, that was on the on the surface. Who knows what's going on? And, and Mark Messier, the, the, the one quote that that Messier has uh, struck me as uh, as you know this one. Uh, Destiny was not a sure thing. Quite the opposite. It was a worthless company propped up by nothing more than Morose's grandiose promises. Uh, I guess when you're suing somebody, you bring out both barrels. But man, that's that's strongly worded for there was nothing going on there. So I don't know what I was seeing when I was there. 
it's really shows that there's not a sure bet when it comes yeah. to these kinds of things. And it's interesting how sometimes things come around, you know, 15 years ago, this is what struck me in the story. 15 years ago, Moreau su successfully sued former Oilers owner, Peter Pocklington. There's yeah. a name from the past over the hundred thousand dollars that he invested into one of Pocklington's business ventures. Oh man. I remember reading about Pocklington and Gretzky's biography and uh, wow. What a, what a character. Um, so it's, just what a fascinating story. Yeah, yeah it, we'll be it, following. It, it really is interesting to see how this is going to come about. Um, but it, it also shows you that there's a lot of people looking to invest. Like, you know, some Mark Messi decided yeah. in the beginning to invest in the cannabis industry. So it is also interesting to show that, and we've talked about some of the big names as, as well in, in the past that are, you know, putting their names on in the United States or just investing in uh, different companies. All right, uh, how about, um, you know, something that made big news? Like th these two stories that we talked about, they were big news in the last week. And then a giant merger in the cannabis industry <laughs> kind of throws down the Trump card. What do you think about uh, this <laughs> Tilray Afria merger? It's, it's always the year end, man. Things really shake down in the year end. And I've got a decent amount of cannabis investments. I dabble, not, yeah, I'm a journalist, so obviously it's not, uh, there's not a lot of big Cheetos on the line here. <laughs> <laughs> but I can say that from what I've played around with, Afri is actually the only company that is making any money in my portfolio right now. And, you know, here's this Tilray Afri merger comes around, forming the new biggest cannabis company in the world. This deal is valued at $4 billion. And it really is a tale of two companies. Tilray has struggled. Its shares are down about 95% from their optimistic peak in 2018. And Afria, meanwhile, over the last few months, has really been the bell of the ball. They have a strong reputation on their medical side. Um, they have a lot of great brands in their portfolio recreationally, like Broken Coast. And, uh, you know, recently, Bob, we talked about uh, U.S. Brewer Sweetwater. So as far as the nuts and bolts of this merger, uh, Afria CEO Irwin Simon is going to preside which makes a lot of sense considering where these two companies stand right now. And his car counterpart in Tilray, Brendan Kennedy, is going to become a board member. The deal, if it is sealed, um, should be done probably by second quarter 2021. Um, AFRI is going to pay a 23% premium in an all-stock transaction. And so that'll give its shareholders ownership of 62% of Tilray. Uh, and the, the newly formed company is actually going to keep the Tilray name which was something that surprised me. So combined now, this entity is actually going to uh, have 17% of the market share in Canada. Um, we really are talking about a behemoth company here. This is crazy, 17%. Their goal is to control 30% of uh of this market which is geez that's a that's an auspicious goal that's huge but um <laughs> yeah. you know what they're they're at 17 percent. so who's to say that they uh they certainly can't get there so the, the the question that everybody wants to know is you know who are the who are the winners and and you know are there potentially any losers out of this uh i mean there was a one analyst basically said that the winner out of this is uh tilray because they have more to gain from it. Um, you know, overall, it's seen as a positive for the industry as far as consolidation is concerned. And I think that we're going to see a lot more consolidation over the next few years, um, not just with Canadian companies that are growing in order to stay competitive, but as more markets open up, we're going to see companies with a presence in different countries um, that are going to come together to form just larger worldwide entities. Yeah, I, I, I really think as the world opens up, uh, there's a lot of companies right now and maybe a lot of companies that aren't even in the cannabis space that are just sitting back, waiting for things to open up a little bit more. And then, you know, they're either going to start adding to their portfolio or, or get into the can. I, I really think that's something that is going to happen over the next little while. Not everybody, but yeah. I think we're going to be some CISA, a couple of big partnerships, uh, you know, within the next year. I think so. We already are seeing that. It's definitely a trend that's starting to form. Mm -hmm. All right, this yeah. this uh, next story, uh, before we get to some uh, gift ideas uh, to wrap things up, uh, 
as we approach Christmas. But this is an interesting story uh, from uh, taken off uh, the the Reuters site uh, that Canadian health regulator says people are growing too much pot at home. I'm, I, you know, at, at first when I saw this, I thought I was thinking, is this? Did I go onto like the the Beaverton website or something? Like, is this like a a Mad TV headline sort of thing, like Mad Magazine? So I don't know. What What do you think of this story as you dive into it past the headline? I I think that Reuters came at it from the wrong angle. Yeah. Um, you know, just with a few years as an editor, so. We'll tell people what it's about. Basically, Health Canada has flagged a big jump in the amount of medical cannabis being grown at home, uh, stating its findings show that uh, those kinds of authorizations actually rose to 36.2 grams by the end of March compared with 25.2 grams in October 2018. Um, so, you know, the, we've seen an increase. Health Canada is concerned that this uh, highly high daily authorized amount is um, leading to abuse of access to cannabis for medical purposes um, and are undermining the integrity of the system. You know, it says that 40, over 43,000 people now are allowed to grow cannabis for personal use and uh, 377,000 clients or so are registered as patients. Um, and meanwhile, this is, this is where the, the big difference lies. Average purchases by registered patients who can buy pot from licensed producers and federal medical sellers have stayed generally as low as two grams or so every month. And I think that we need to put a little bit of rationality into these numbers. Yes. Understanding that growing at home as a medical patient is a lot more affordable. And when you look at the cost on the medical side, in a lot of cases, it's pretty expensive for your medicine and there really isn't much way to get that money back. So when you have the option to grow at home compared to buying from the medical market, it makes a lot more sense financially for people who are on disability, right? So we're not talking about people who are making exorbitant amounts of money per year. Often we're talking about people who are just scraping by and uh, to see that, that people are growing more at home rather than buying from the medical market isn't really that surprising to me, even to see it increase. And people are getting better at growing. People who are growing now have, even if they just started when the, when we legalized here in Canada, they've got, you know, one, two seasons under their belt right now. And we're starting to see a bit of a bump in what people are able to produce. So these numbers don't overly surprise me. Uh, Health Canada, you know, I imagine that the government right now is looking at trying to make sure that they're flagging, of course, anything that seems to be suspicious in the system. Uh, but when you look at it from that kind of perspective, I, I think this makes a lot of sense to me and I'm not surprised. And Reuters, in my opinion, put a little bit too much weight on, uh, you know, a conspiracy theory here that something is happening uh, that should be when it comes to growing at, people who are growing at home. Yeah, and you know, there's a portion of this where they talk about uh, CBC News uh, reporting the raid in October uh, of an illegal cannabis grow operation. A couple of, a few of them actually, between July and October, uh, a majority which had personal uh, production authorization. So, you know, I, this story to me would be uh, a lot more digestible if they would have included some of the things that you just talked about in the fact that. Maybe it's just that it's so damn expensive that more people have learned to grow and invested in a little bit into some sort of kit in the beginning to get the benefits at the end. If if that was included in this, I, th I would think, okay, they're looking at both sides. But, you know, I don't know why Health Canada or, or whoever is, is, is looking at this wouldn't look at that side maybe because there's uh, they're, they're wanting more people to buy instead of growing i don't know i but if they would have included some of the information that you said about the cost then i think you could see why maybe more people are growing yeah there's always two sides to a story and uh you know, i'm don't get me wrong i'm sure that there's some form of abuse that's happening oh, um, because yes, there is yes. with any system that you set up yes. uh but you for the majority, I imagine that people are, you know, fingers crossed, getting better at growing and, uh, you know, are growing better medicine for themselves at home.
Yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm not naive to think that somebody isn't abusing the system to sell in the black market or whatever it might be. I, I it, there's no no system is certainly perfect, but I don't think it's as drastic as it was uh, yeah. certainly made out to be. All right, we are just days before uh, the big celebration, uh, whatever it is you're celebrating this year for our listeners and our viewers out there. Um, I just hope you're celebrating with cannabis. I certainly will be. I, I know <laughs> that my stocking is going to have some cannabis items in it from my wife, and I know that hers is going to have some as well, even though she's not as big of a fan of it as uh, mine. There are options for everybody, whether it's CBD, whether it's accessories, uh, whatever it might be. What are some of the things that you think make great uh, stocking stuffers or presents for the cannabis enthusiast this year, David? No, I'm a I'm a 2.0 guy in so many ways, and I've been putting chocolates in Christmas cards for my friends and family. Um, retailers I've noticed are starting to sell drinks in flats of four, which are pretty cool. I'd love yeah. to see something like that under the tree with a bow on it. And gummies and chocolates. Who doesn't like to have a little bit of sweet indulgence around the holidays? Uh, I personally love the Wana gummies. Mm -hmm. And as far as the chocolates go, I love the Bang and Legend gummies. And I think that are really affordable. I usually can get them for about four bucks a pop. Um, You know, Christmas is a time too where I feel like it's kind of fun to slip something into someone's card or under the tree who maybe wouldn't try cannabis on their own. Um, You know, just to just to give them that different kind of experience. And I usually try to keep it to a higher level of CBD when I'm gifting mm-hmm. that way. And I found that tea is really great for that kind of a gift because you can get an all CBD tea and tea is just so comforting. You can sit there in the winter time with a hot mug and enjoy a little bit of CBD or yeah. even a one-to-one with some THC. So that's those are my, my recommendations uh, for those out there who are looking for some last minute gifts. That's awesome. You know, there's a there's a, a retail store in in St. Albert where where I'm located, uh, Green Rock Cannabis, and they actually have a cannabis concierge program that they have going on. So, you know, it's the same thing. Maybe, but maybe you're, you're a person out there that doesn't know anything about cannabis. You don't use cannabis, but you have somebody on your Christmas wish list that does. Well, all you do is you you head into the store, you call them up, and you say, listen. This is how much I want to spend. Uh, I don't know what they like, but they smoke it or they eat it or whatever. They'll put like this package together for you, which is awesome because there are so many people out there that might know somebody that uses cannabis, but they might not know anything or, um, you know, they, maybe they don't have time. This is, that's a great program. So I would, if you're in my area, I would definitely check out Green Rock uh, Cannabis because that's you know, for for somebody that you're unsure of, it's it's perfect. I'm I'm uh, I, I'm definitely hoping hoping uh, that uh, like I said last uh, week, I'd love for some Acapulco gold to land under my tree. I highly <laughs> doubt that's going to happen, but I know something that could. Like I, I've got the slash here. Uh, I know you've uh, checked this out as well. Looks like the old uh, Men in Black memory eraser, uh, but don't worry. It just just don't don't go don't go too hard or else uh, your memory will be intact but I, I love this thing it's and plus it's a local Edmonton company so it's right in my backyard um, you can find this at a lot of places you can check it out at stonesmith.ca so I really dig this this I this is a really good gift I think David for somebody who's never experienced dabbing before because you don't have to get out the torch you know the temperature settings uh, it's very easy to use uh, it's got the uh, the built-in loader uh, that you see there, and I have, have not cleaned mine properly uh, in a in a day. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, it, that, it's a great introduction to dabbing for people. And then you know, depending on your budget, you want to get into a volcano. That's that's really you got to have somebody really special. Uh, but I think there's a lot of cool things. You know, like if if you have somebody that has a pipe, those little Smojo's screens, like they're a great little thing. You drop them in this. They're not expensive, but you know, you know what it's like. You have a pipe, and you tip it over to clean it out. Then you lose your screen if you have it, and then you got to dig it out. This takes care of that. So I think there's lots of stuff on every person's kind of budget out there. You know, the Regal Cigar, those are awesome for uh, just sitting out if it's a nice day, and you know you can get outside, and uh, it's like a just a giant looks like a giant cigar. So 
I think there's lots of great ideas, and and I just hope everybody you know celebrates responsibly and safely and and enjoys a little cannabis to bring things down a little bit this Christmas season, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And if there are any super fans out there who want a secret Santa me, that yeah. 24 karat gold volcano, <sighs> yeah, I would love that. <laughs> that um, thing is swanky. That thing, it's their 20th <laughs> anniversary. It's the classic with that gold plating. Last week we did 24 karat gold from Strain Wreck. And I used, I, I, I double bagged it actually. I had the uh, supernova as I <laughs> called it. And I had the uh, uh, gold member going at the same time. But it is, you know, I, I feel the need to get it out and clean it every once in a while. Just, it's like, a, it's just, it's, I, I would feel, it feels weird when I see fingerprints on it. But you're right. I, I hope there's a secret Santa out there that gets a hold of you and you get the, uh, the gold member as well. But uh, anyway, it's been a, a great, great uh, time spending um, with you uh, as we go into 2021 i know 2020 has been tough on a lot of things but having you drop by every week has been a lot of fun david so merry christmas we're going to do our year in review uh, that'll come out just before new year so we'll have one more conversation but uh, i won't talk to you again before christmas so merry christmas and all the best in 2021 to you and yours david and to you too my friend it's always always great to talk to you yeah all right. i'll highlight of my week every time Awesome. You can find David at OkanaganZ.com and check him out on Twitter at OkanaganZ.